This is the 2024 Ford F-150. It's the 502A Lariat trim level of the vehicle that also has the black appearance package. And you can tell because it's got these 20 inch black wheels instead of the typical 18s. But I gotta say, I'm a big fan of those 18 inch wheels. You're gonna find the F-150 either four by two, four by four. And because this is the 502A Lariat, it's pretty loaded. LED headlamps, there are LED fogs, the forward sensing systems there. On top of that, there's also the front facing camera. You can utilize the side mounted cameras and the backup camera for a full 360 view. You've got two tow hooks in the front that are painted black, but that black on black look, I think looks damn nice. Oh, that looks good. Beautiful, let's take a peek under the hood. All right, so with the 2024 F-150, there are a few small changes. So you're no longer looking at the 3.3 liter V6 as the standard engine choice. It's now the 2.7 liter EcoBoost instead. But this one has the Coyote 5 liter V8. Look at that, eight cylinder there. Beautiful. This one has 400 horsepower, 410 pound feet of torque. And the overall power output is going to depend on which one of the available engines that you've got. So it's the 2.7 EcoBoost, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, the 3.5 EcoBoost high output, the 3.5 liter power boost. You've got the 5 liter Coyote V8. There's also one specifically for the Raptor. You can get the Lightning. There are so many powertrain options that are available. But the way you go is going to depend on you. The Coyote 5 liter V8 is still pretty good on fuel economy. And one of the benefits of having this engine, especially if you're looking at towing, I've had a number of people that have had the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, the Power Boost, and the Coyote, saying that the 5 liter V8 gives them better towing fuel economy. So which way you go is gonna depend on what you need. If you're never towing, the 2.7 could make the most sense, but that 5 liter naturally aspirated is one of the more popular engines. You can easily top up your wiper fluid, easy access to the battery as well. Checking, changing oil, a little bit tricky. And then the warranty inside of the Ford world, your basic is gonna be a three year, 36,000 mile, 60,000 kilometer. Powertrain gets bumped up. So it's a 60,000 mile, 100,000 kilometer. And then if you had the power boost or the lightning, so hybrid electric components are eight year, 100,000 mile, 160,000 kilometer instead but just make sure you take care of your ride. It's gonna take care of you. Ooh, it's a little hot right now, damn. <laughs> All right, so let's take a peek along the back here. Fuel quality inside of the vehicle is going to depend on, well, for the most part, it's just gonna be 87 octane. The only time you have to use the 91 is if you're in the supercharged version in the Raptor. But outside of that, just regular 87 is all you need to use. 4x2 is going to get slightly better fuel economy than 4x4. The 2.7 is going to get better fuel economy than the 5 liter V8. So the overall fuel economy is going to be based on the configuration of the truck that you've got. And there are so many configurations available. So this is the Super Crew. So you've got the four full doors and it's also the five and a half foot bed. So inside of the Super Crew, you still have the six and a half. There's the Super Cab with the two full doors in the front and then the half doors that swing the opposite way and then the regular cab with just the two doors. But if you wanna walk through on configuration options and payload towing and how that all works, you'll find that down in the description of this video. But along the back end here, you can see dual tip exhaust, that blacked out Ford logo. I honestly, I love that Ford blacked out logo over the blue. That's a matter of preference, but that's my opinion on it. Dropping down, tow package here. So you've got your seven and your four pin wiring provisions. The release for the spare tire that's located just underneath the truck and then you've also got your receiver inside of the f-150 you're able to tow up to 13,500 pounds but that's going to depend on how you have it built out are you in the 4x2 the 4x4 the super cab the regular cab the super crew which engine do you have there are so many things you have to consider so as I said, I've put together a walkthrough video or an explainer video talking about the configurations, how that plays into payload and towing. You can find that down below. And payload is another thing because again, it, it depends on your overall configuration of the truck. So if you're looking at a truck that's on a dealership lot, you could look just along the driver's side door. 
So you see there, based off of the configuration here, your max payload is 1,648 pounds. So the overall payload towing capacity is going to depend on how you have the truck configured. This one doesn't have the available bed utility package. But nice and slow drop down. But if you had the bed utility package, you'd have the measurement units there. There's the option for different tunnel covers and then even looking at the back end side of the vehicle as well. So the truck. So you've got the option for either a spray in or a drop in bed liner. I'm personally a bigger fan of the spray in bed liners, but again, matter of preference, because one of the big benefits of that spray in liner over the, like even the factory liner. So you can go factory liner for spray in or aftermarket through line X. I honestly always just recommend if you're going spray in, go aftermarket through line X. It's about twice as thick as the factory liner. And it also has a lifetime warranty. So it's kind of a no brainer at that point. But there are options there, options for tunnel covers, for caps and things like that. Tunnel cover, I find that the trifold hardtop is the more popular option. Along the outside of the bed, you've got a 400 watt power plug. If you were in the power boost, you've got the option of going up to 7.2 kilowatt hours as well. Big benefit there is you can essentially use your truck as a mobile generator. But this one, just a regular plug in the back. Along the right side, there's also a tiny little storage cubby there as well. There's the option for different things on top of that, like so many accessories. You can get a bed extender if you wanted to. If you wanted to get some ramps, so loading ramps that are mountable along the sides, those are also available too. Straightforward there. I mean, this look even looking. So this is the five and a half foot bed. So you've got either the five and a half, the six and a half, or the eight foot, just depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in as well, because you're not able to get the eight foot bed in the super crew. Can't even get it in the super cab anymore, but it is available if you need it. Ah, truck style is good. There's zone lighting. Oh, forgot to point that out. So zone lighting there, you've got a light in the back. There's the backup camera, reverse sensing systems there. You've also got your bed lighting along the top as well. This is just gonna be your traditional black running board. So black platform board. Some of the higher trims of the F-150 are going to have a power deployable as well. The side view mirrors feature turn signals. They're heated. It's got the blind spot monitoring system as well. You've got the five digit number pad. So if you wanted to get in the truck without your key fob, you could. You could push the bottom two in order to lock the door. You can push there to lock the door. And then as long as you've got the key fob on you, slide your hand in in order to unlock. The seats inside of the Lariat are incredible. They're comfortable. Get there in a second, but you've got interesting little highlight there with driver's seat memory. So three individual profiles, but because this is the 502A Lariat, it's tied into so many other things. Set up your side view mirror the way that you want to, set up your steering wheel the way that you want to, and your driver's seat. And then you're just gonna push and hold either one, two, or three for it to remember your own personal profile. This has the one of the upgraded sound systems. So there are different options that are available. Touch on that in a second. I like that highlight. Wrapped around the vent there looks good. You can turn on your zone lighting for your side view mirrors, release the tailgates, turn on your bed lighting, figure out what's going on with your lamps. Honestly, I always just recommend for most people just be in your auto mode instead. Increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen. And then some models of the F-150 are also going to have power adjustable pedals. Really useful if you're vertically challenged. And then this is the thermoplastic rubber tray mat that you're going to find from the factory. So regular carpeted liners, rubber tray. You can go aftermarket if you want to through WeatherTech. Both mats are solid in my, in my personal experience. Wah. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's do a little startup. There we go. Beautiful. Now, before we get there, the seat comfort in the Lariat is really, really good. Oh, oh, only two way, only up and down. So no backwards, forwards at all, but still comfortable. And then overall seat space. Okay. Yeah. So the seats as far down as it's going to go. And with the driver's seat set up this way, I've got four, three and a half, four ish inches of head space, which is pretty respectable. But the Lariat here has leather seats. So you're going to find leather seats when you get into the XLT with the sport appearance package. You'll also find it inside of the Tremor when you get the 402A and then the Lariat as well. And then King Ranch and Platinum. 
The downside of getting the leather seats inside of the XLT is that they're strictly going to be heated. But when you get to the 402A Tremor or the Lariat, you've also got ventilated first row seats available. And those ventilated seats are such a butt saver on days like today when, I mean, it's hot. It's not too bad, but we're looking at 24 degrees Celsius right now. So it's a little bit warm. But interior here looks great. Steering wheel, again, that black badge because of the black appearance package. Fully digital cluster screen as well. But one cool thing about the cluster is that as you go to different modes, so let's go to, I love this, the off-road mode, the way that that looks. So good, so good. And then even, looking there, head-up display, that has an off-road mode there too. So if your plan is to take your truck off-road, you've got tons of options available. There's adaptive cruise control inside the vehicle as well, but if you want a full walkthrough, like you want to know how to use the steering wheel buttons, go through the cluster screen, use the infotainment system, you'll find walkthroughs down in the description of the video. There's one thing about the infotainment system this year that I am not crazy about. Oh, but I like that. I like that 360 camera. Oh, where was I? Scroll. All right, hold on. Let's get out of that uh, off-road mode. All right. Yeah, so the infotainment system here is good. You've got your usual, so audio for different sources. You've got AM, FM, Sirius XM. If you had a USB stick with MP3s on it, that would be available as an option. You can tune a ton of different ways if you want. And then speaker availability. There are a few different options depending on how you have the truck configured. Four speakers at a minimum when you get into the regular cab, and then you're going up to a 14 speaker, bang on a left and sound system. And the speakers, I think you can see, all over the place when you get that updated upgraded system and the audio quality is incredible inside the vehicle so just going right out of the microphone here there's no post-processing done whatsoever little brand van nice good song good artist but the audio inside of the truck is so ridiculously good and again that's that's just the, like the bang and a left and sound system. It's so good. Like the cabin inside this truck is pretty big too. So if you're an audiophile, the upgraded sound systems are good. The entry level systems are pretty good as well. Like in the Larry, you'll get an eight speaker bang and a left and standard, but the upgraded 14 is just a step above. If you appreciate good audio, you could go the 502A to get that upgraded system, or you could also just do an aftermarket install yourself, but it's pretty solid. Uh, yeah, so the downside of this screen now, navigation. So rather than it being built-in navigation, it's now connected navigation. So the feature requires activation. So with the built-in navigation and the difference between the built-in versus the connected, built-in navigation, you would have had three years of service. After the three years are up, it would revert to a traditional GPS instead. Now it's connected navigation. And the downside of the connected navigation, so you only get one year of connected service, after the one year is up, it reverts to a traditional dead moving, or just a dead moving map, I should say. So you wouldn't be able to enter the end destination. You have to actually subscribe to the service to keep using it. Otherwise, it's just gonna follow you around and you can't use, you can't input an end destination. But you can still hook up through Android or iPhone devices. You can use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. Uh, you'll find that walkthrough video to use those and set it up down in the description. I wish it was still built in, but at least you have a one year thing of service. And that's actually even for Blue Cruise. So Blue Cruise is available inside this vehicle. So you've got cameras that are going to watch your eyes and it takes the adaptive cruise control to the next level. And that's fully hands-free driving on highways and interstates. So if you're the type of person where you go on distance trips all the time, you're always on the highway, the adaptive cruise is good. Blue Cruise is just a step above. It's nice just to be able to kind of relax a little bit, let the truck take over steering for you as well. You obviously want to make sure you're still paying attention so you're not sleeping as you use the system but it's pretty cool that that's available as an option. Yeah, the truck, like it's so damn loaded. It's wild how much is in here. Pro trailer backup assist. So rather than counter steering the steering wheel, if you suck at doing that when you're backing up a trailer, you just twist this the way that you want it to go. A series of different drive modes as well. So you've got your, I was showing you there, sport modes, etc. Sport mode's gonna hold on to the RPMs a little bit longer. And then you've got your basic normal modes, tow modes and things like that. So different options there. And then you've got all of your different modes here. So because this is the Lariat, you've got the 4A, so the 4 Auto. So the vehicle is going to determine essentially which mode you're in. Too high, the majority of the time. 
Four high for slippery, snowy winter conditions. Four low if you're pulling heavy loads, pulling a boat out of water, whatever the case may be. Or four auto, let the truck figure it out. We've got dual zone climate control. Like I said, heated and ventilated first row seats. The ventilated is such a damn good feature though, especially on days when it's hot out with leather seats. So you'll find that in the 402A Tremor, the Lariat, the King Ranch, and the Platinum versions of the truck. Heated seats are available in the XLT. I think it's the 302A and up, but a lot of different options available for seats. I just love me my heated ventilated seats. My personal preference, I love the look of the interior of the Tremor 402A. You have an aggressive outside as well, which I love, better suspension and unique seats. So I would go Tremor 402A over the Lariat, but that's a matter of personal preference. You're gonna find a heated steering wheel, some different power points there as well. And then you've got this little tray, little emergency access key there, a few USB ports and a wireless charge pad. Now this is the floor shifter. You might have the floor shifter, might have the column shifter, just depending on how you have the truck built out. But one thing that I like about this, let's get those sunglasses down there work surface area so this work surface area was a standalone option last year for 2024 it's part of what's known as the mobile office package instead so it comes packaged with a few different things depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in the shifter feels good i love that you've got the manual mode as well so you can take advantage of the 10 speed automatic transmission but manual mode, using it this way, or even if you've got the column shifter, it works the same way as if you were using paddle shifters as well. I put together a video explaining how that works and you can find that down in the description of this video. Other things to point out, you've got a good amount of storage space inside of the console. Setup wise, it's either gonna be 40 console 40 or a full bench seat configuration, so 40, 20, 40. You can't get the bench seat configuration in the Lariat anymore. So you'd have to drop down to the lower trims to get it. But if you need it, it's available. That's going to give you six seats. Matter of preference, but I love that console setup instead. We've got a few cup holders in the back. There's a little storage tray. Glove box that's lockable. Sit speaker along the side. You've got your holy crap handles. There's the option for the auto dimming rear view mirror, depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in but the auto dimming function cannot be turned off. From there, you've also got your controls for your cabin lights. There's also panoramic sunroof. The panoramic sunroof is amazing. <laughs> it's a single button press, opens it up most of the way. Secondary button press, opens it up that last little bit. You can vent, create a cross breeze or open it up. And same idea, so the first button press opens it up the majority of the way. It's a little bug guard. Second press, opens it up that last little bit. But I mean that, that's nice. That's nice. nice. From there, you've also got a button there and that's for power sliding rear window. So with the power sliding window, you actually do have to press and hold in order for it to open and close. You've got a sunglasses holder there there you've got a home link system so if you've got a garage door opener at home you can program it in there's a ticket receipt holder the visor has vanity <laughs> the visor the visor has a vanity mirror and it has lights built in and then this also extends out blocking all of the sun that could be hitting your face wow. i like all of the changes that came to the lariat that head-up display now i love it that's so good i like that the truck now has blue cruise too wow. With the driver's seat set up this way for myself being six feet tall, let's head to the back and see the space. Ooh. Oh, it's such a nice day. All right, so some basics here before I hop in. You've got a little cup holder there, some door storage as well. And then, well, let's do it. Oh, getting in, running boards, super useful. All right, with the driver's seat set up for myself being six feet tall, Inside of the second row, I've got a good amount of foot space, good amount of knee space, and up overhead, sitting fully upright, ooh, an inch and a half-ish. I'd say probably an inch and a half of head space, but there's so much room inside this truck. So if you're using it as a work truck, Super Crew, 
would probably be the way to go. You can get the super cab, but it's going to shrink the amount of leg space that you'd have. So super cab versus super cruise going to depend on what you're doing with the track. But yeah, it's a great amount of space. You've got pockets behind both the driver and the passenger side. I mentioned the cup holders there. And because this is the Lariat 502A, heated second row seats strictly on the outboard. So the middle seat's never going to be heated and there's no ventilation options available yet for the second row in any trim of the vehicle. You've got a 12 volt power point, two USB type C ports, and you can see there a little bit of ambient light as well. There's also a 400 watt plug back there. From there, nice and simple. You've got a little hook and a light over top and that's the same for the driver passenger side. Straightforward. And then there are also cup holders built right into the seats. Anchor points are there if you've got kid seats or if you need to tie down adults that are acting like children, that's available too. This is good. I do, honestly, I really like the amount of space that you're going to find inside of the Super Crew version of the truck. My dad had one of these things when I was growing up and we needed it for sure. I come from a family with nine kids, so having this space back here really useful but like i said the super cab is available there as well you just won't have as much space you're gonna have more than enough space for three full-size adults as well hmm. middle seat's not quite as comfortable but still there's the same amount of leg space and knee space if you need it then one other thing to point out ooh, i guess there's probably two two things to point out so along the seat here you've got this tab we don't need it yet because we left the seat up and you've got the partition lockable storage. Such a useful feature, but you could unlock it in order to lock it down or to, in order to collapse it if you want to. But if you actually want to know how the partition lockable storage works, you'll find a comprehensive walkthrough video down in the description of this video. But once the seat's up, it's actually locked into place. So you have to pull the tab there in order to release. And this is the benefit of getting the partition lockable storage right from the factory is that it's got the keyhole built in. I've had a few people ask, could you install the partition lockable storage aftermarket? Can you? Yes. Is it easy to do? Absolutely not, because the partition lockable storage is bolted down to the truck. So you can't just buy the partition lockable storage from a Ford dealership either. You'd have to find a truck that's been written off in order to make it happen. So if you are contemplating partition lockable storage, add it to your order at time of ordering from the factory. It is a pain in order to do it aftermarket. And unless you replace the entire bench seat with one with that lock, you're SOL. So one thing to consider. Ooh. Other thing to point out on the opposite side of the truck. Oh yeah, listen to that. That coyote, man. So damn good. All right. The side lifting up, you can access the other part of the partition lockable storage, but you've also got the power inverter back there too. There, there's a tab along the back here. You can pull. You've got the tether point, so if you need to tie down child seats, you also got the jack stand there as well, and the white spigot. So if you ever need to fill up using a jerry can, into the tank first, and then the jerry can hose in there. Yeah, the jack stand, so if you wanted to change the tire out yourself, you've got the flexibility to do it. But one of the nice things about being a Ford owner is that you also do have access to roadside assistance. And that's the same length as the powertrain warranty. So five year, 100,000 kilometers, 60,000 mile. And that's nice because you can get somebody to change the tire for you. They can help out with fuel delivery, winching services, and so many other things. But that was a look at the F-150 Lariat. You can find all of the build details for this truck down in the description of the video, along with the contact details for Formula Ford, who were nice enough to lend this thing to me for the afternoon to shoot the video for you guys today. But if you found this video useful, Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and until I see you next time, take care.